Hi, I'm Jody and welcome back or no, happy starting actual LPIC 1 lessons. The first module is 101, 1, determine and configure hardware settings. A warning from Jody. This, in my opinion, is the most difficult module you will ever had in LPIC 1 or even you will ever had in learning Linux. When you are in command line, it's very straightforward. You do this, that will happen. You install this, you configure this. Even if you want to do complicated things like configuring a, I don't know, a web server. Okay, this is the command, configure it. These are the settings, now apply your settings. It's much easier than determining and configuring hardware settings. Even maybe 70, 80, 90, 95% of the professional Linux administrators never determine and configure hardware settings. In most cases, we are working on the systems which are working. You never go to troubleshoot one driver of one specific network card from 10 years ago. Anyway, so be brave and also please consider that the weight is two. So this is not a very important module. You don't need to know everything in depth you should be able to have an understanding of these objectives, enable, disable, integrated peripherals, differentiate between various types of mass storage, blah, 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 and know these commands and things in Linux. And one more thing. Linux starts from a difficult position. In the beginning, you have to be able to install it, configure it, not to delete your windows when you are doing a dual boot installation. Determine how you should make the Linux work with your nasty NVIDIA driver, anything. This is much, much, much more difficult than the things you are going to later work, even if you are working on neural networks. That's much, much, much easier. So be patient. Don't panic. And as you can see, I have a free book. It is called linuxfirst.com. It's free book. You can use it for exam preparation, checking some stuff. You can, it's free in the meaning that first you can use it out of charge. You can use it as you like, and you can contribute it, contribute to it on GitHub if interested. Anyway, let's start the lessons. Find out about the hardware. Let's understand what OS does. Say you have a computer. This is your hardware. When we are speaking about hardware, we are speaking about electricity, ICs, actual physical resistors, transistors, CPU, everything hardware. But we want to, for example, run our text editor there. We want to configure our networking via SSHing to a server. We want to play a game. We want to use a word processor. We want to watch a movie. We want to practice our LPIC. What you should do to uh, communicate with this hardware. Here, OS helps you. When speaking about hardware, we are speaking about hardware, CPUs, everything, electricity. But you need to run softwares there, you run your programs there. So you need to actually contact this memory here and say, I need this much memory. Nobody goes to write that program when they are writing a game. So we have the OS in the middle. What OS does is communicating with the hardware and managing hardware, its resources, and providing them to your softwares. When you have operating system running on your hardware, in my, in my simple program, I can just say, I need a variable with one megabyte memory space. You will tell this to operating system. Operating system will go to the memory, will allocate some part of the physical memory for you, and will answer back, OK. So very easy to do. Operating systems management. You want to send something to a network. I don't want to understand how this specific card works, how 
this specific company have made this network card and how I should send my data so a web server will understand it. So I will say to my OS, please send this to the internet to this address. OS understands this network card, will contact it, even will encapsulate whatever protocol it is needed to talk with the web server and sends it, gets back the answer and just gives me the answer back. This is much, 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 much easier method to communicate with the systems than doing everything by yourself. That's why we have operating systems. Operating system at the end is a software for sure, but it's a software that manages computer hardware, software resources, and provides common services for computer programs. So if you are writing a game and you want to show a tank here, it is enough to say, okay, this is the shape of my tank. Please show it on the display. Operating system will take care of understanding how your VGA works, what's the size of your monitor, whatever, whatever. And at the end, the picture is there. This is what the OS does. We also have another concept, which is a firmware. You know the software, you know the hardware. We have the firmware in the middle. Just imagine this keyboard. I have an external keyboard which communicates with my computer using Bluetooth. This needs to run kind of a software. That software is called firmware. In the old times, when we were speaking about the hardware, everything was actually designed by electronic engineers. It was running on CPUs. Even if you wanted to create a, I don't know, microfer oven, you had to create a circuit which understand that if you are pushing this button, this should happen, but this is very difficult. So nowadays, they have a computer inside them. It is running a software and understand, okay, if this button is pushed, turn on this for one second, whatever, blah, blah. If this is program is chosen, you do this for that and turn this lamp on, whatever. Software is controlling this. It is not anymore pure electronics, pure hardware. This is called firmware because it is running on a hardware to let the OS or other software communicate with it more easily. Motherboards also have the this uh, firmware. When you have a motherboard, there is a CPU there, there are RAM slots, there are peripheral slots to add some other cards to them. And there are lots and lots of components here. And there is one small chip with a software on it, which we call a firmware, which boots up your computer. Because at the first second that you connected the power, it should do something. So it starts running this software, which is your firmware. It goes, checks if the hardware is working fine, checks, okay, I have one hard disk here. What is written here? It reads this puts this in the memory and tells the CPU to continue from here. It boots up your computer. In old times, this firmware, this motherboard's firmware used to be the BIOS, basic input output system. As you can guess, it was very primitive. It had lots and lots of limitations. One of the biggest limitations was it was only able to boot your system from, as I said, the first sector of your hard disk, which is called MBR. Uh, and this MBR was very small. So even for a 10 year old operating system, it is impossible to boot completely from MBR. So we had to have two step boot procedures. Something was written in the MBR, a boot program, we will see later and next chapters, MBR, contain this first stage bootloader. When this was loaded, this was able to go to the hard read your actual operating system files, runs them, and on the second stage, operating system was taking ownership of the system. It was booting in two stages. This BIOS had lots of limitations. So, on 1998, Intel introduced EFI, later we know it as Unified EFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. As you can see, this is more modern. 
if you call it, and it has more capabilities. For example, on the Linux system, you can have a boot partition. We will see everything about partitions later. And I have to tell you once more, this is the most difficult part because you are not actually running commands, this module I mean. And when you are starting the LPIC and any other course, in the first parts, in the first half, you always hear that we will talk about this later. From one place, you will start hearing, as I told you in previous sessions. We are on the start of this journey, so don't panic. We will cover many, many of these things again later with in more, with more depth. Anyway, what happens is uh, UEFI can boot the system from the slash boot partition, which is, a, which is a fat partition. Again, we will cover this later. This way, you will have more space to put your boot files there. It has better capabilities, better hardware understanding. And nowadays, most systems, practically whatever you buy from the market nowadays, uses UEFI, which is a more modern uh, firmware for your motherboards. But as I talked, on the motherboard, let's say like this. In the beginning days of the computers, they were designing one computer. Your computer, when you go and buy it, had everything it needed. Its memory, its graphic card, its, I don't know, whatever there, there is. Your modem, if you had a modem those days, you were super rich. But the, later they found out, okay, this is difficult. Because if I want to increase my memory, I have to buy a new computer. If there is a new video card, which I want to buy, I have to change my whole computer. So this is a better approach. I will create a motherboard. I will put a socket for CPU. I will put some sockets for RAM. So you can change your socket. You can take your RAM out, put a new larger RAM in it. And also I will put some expansion ports here. The most famous one was PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect. This letting hardware boards to be added to the motherboard. So if you've heard about this new thing, which is called modem, which lets you connect to the this new thing, which is called network, you don't need to change your computer. You will just go to a shop, pay your money, and you will get a cart. You will bring cart here. I will put your cart in this slot. These are three different PCIs, PCI Express, PCI 32 bits and PCI X. There are other expansion ports too, but let's focus on these ones. Now you are able to upgrade your computer without changing it, without changing everything in it. You were able to expand your computers. Most of the PCIs are used for internal hard disks. When we say HDD, hard disk drive, are speaking about those nowadays old hard disks which had a circular surface with a magnetic head, which was reading and it was spinning fast and everything. And we had different hard of those, if different kinds of those hard disks. We had PATA, which is very old standard, SATA, which is serial and up to four devices. We had SCSI, which are parallels and up to eight devices could be used. Also, we have the external hard disks. What we know nowadays, which is very famous, I have not opened it yet, but this is an external hard disk with a USB connection. On the servers, we also have these fiber connections, which are much, much, much faster. Or, for example, you can add a network card here, which uses RJ45. I think I have one here, yes. This is a RJ45 connection, normal uh, cables we use for networks or other things like a oh, sorry or other things like a wireless cards Wi-Fi cards Bluetooth video accelerators GPUs and audio cards all of these can connect to your PCI connectors you are learning about Linux you don't need deep knowledge about hardware just a general understanding Another connection which is very common nowadays is USB. 
as you can see in chart in this chart we have different types of usbs type a type b type b usb 3 and type c which is a common thing nowadays also you have the mini types which looks like this mini type a and b and you have micro usb disks us uh, usb ports sorry and the improvement was magical usb 1 used to be 12 megabit per second then it became 480 and then it became 20 gigabit per second you can see the increase over the models and also you have a and b and c another concept which is good to know and you have to know i think it was part of the uh not sure if it was part of the gpio anyway it's here and i will tell you it is fun it's gpio general purpose input output this is a raspberry pi port uh computer it's a single board computer spc it's only one board with one specification when you go and buy and plug it and it works you can add some i think sd will go here at sd cards here i think is the power or sound i'm not sure these are the usbs this is the uh ah uh, this is the power sorry this is the audio this is the uh video output and this is gpio this is a general purpose input output there are some pins which you can control or read from separately you can easily say i need a voltage here add a voltage to this pin and some lamp will be on led is a better thing than lamp or you can drive a motor for sure you should not drive a large motor using only this it doesn't have enough ampere for that but at the end this is a concept of general purpose io if you are right building a robot you can connect one sensor here and another motor here and say whenever this sensor turned one it saw something turn this motor to three volts so a punch will go there whatever but this is a concept of general purpose input output you have some pins which you can control for reading or writing data this was the first part now we have an understanding of the hardware let's go and see how linux understands this next part <laughs>